this interview. Thank you. Hey, thank, thank you for coming. You. Congratulations, Cheers. because I like the album. I like the sound. I like the lyrics. Um, Good man. First of all, uh, talking talking about 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 the story, it's like a science fiction story that sadly it could be of what happened right now in the world if, <laughs> if you look at it some way. Yeah, yeah. How, how do you how do you decide or how do you get the idea of okay, I'm gonna write an album about this? Story? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I've always been interested in like technology, modern technology, and what's going on and and. You know, obviously drones is something everybody knows about now. And so, so a couple of years ago, I just started reading about drones. You know, I, I, got, I got this book called Predators, CIA, CIA Drone Warfare, which was a, a great book by a journalist who kind of studied all of the things that have been going on in, in the wars in Afghanistan and Pakistan and so on, East, uh, I mean, Pakistan, Fatah area. And, uh, and it's quite frightening, really, how prevalent and how much they've been used, much more so than the public really knows about, you know. And this information is starting to come through now, you know. So I, I thought it was an interesting, mysterious subject. And to me, this, what drones represents is something like a very critical point in the evolution of technology and where humanity is, because we're, we're allowing ourselves to invent killing machines which can actually make their own decisions now. You know, the, this year, there's lots of ethical debates about whether or not um, it should be permitted to have drones which have artificial intelligence which can make kill decisions without humans involved. And to me, that would be like a full transition away from, uh, you know, for, for, like, for the last few decades, we've been like, allowing technology to really uh, remove empathy and human, human decision making because everybody believes the machines and computers can be more efficient. But obviously, the more efficient we get, the, we lose our humanity. You know? So I kind of wanted to make an album that kind of somehow expressed this in, you know, in some way, both, you know, both through sort of the journey of an individual who kind of feels overcome by these forces and, and all these dark forces that are kind of oppressing you. And I kind of used just drones as a kind of a metaphor to represent those forces. You know? Now, I've done, what, what could be the, the, the biggest challenge for you about making this album? Um, well, I suppose, you know, we've just, we wanted to make this album sound like a certain way. I think we had a certain idea of how we wanted it to sound. You know, we definitely wanted to kind of return slightly back to, you know, the, the sound of why we started the band in the first place, which was kind of the three of us playing in a room and it being kind of a bit more of a raw rock sound and um and generally a bit more like kind of focused on like bass drums and guitar um so it was kind of a bit of a challenge to to stay within that though within that realm i suppose because like the last album we produced it by ourselves and it was very experimental and we're trying out lots of different ideas all the time and you know you can really hear that on the album so just kind of staying within those kind of brackets was slightly challenging and uh I suppose, you know, we worked with Mutt Lang as well and we had a producer for the first time in a few, al in a few albums. So it was, uh, it was kind of interesting to let someone else, you know, it's almost challenging to let someone else's opinion in on our music because we're kind of used to being very kind of like guarded by it. But uh, so, you know, kind of giving someone else the reins a little bit uh, from a production point of view is kind of challenging to just let them do their thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, uh, don't just talk about, uh, about the second law. <coughs> if you... If you it, of course, totally different if you compare it with drones. But what could be the biggest lesson that the second law gave to you, man? Uh, yeah, I think it was interesting because the what I was saying about the sort of the rise of technology and its influence on humanity. I kind of feel like we also, also experienced that in our music, you know, because I kind of feel like we probably embraced we embraced a lot of technology on the last album, Second Law. And I, I kind of feel like maybe the lesson learned was that, you know, we shouldn't forget that just the three of us in a room together playing our instruments is also a very powerful force. It's much more human, has a lot of feeling to it, you know. So I think, I think the lesson we learned was to, we, I think we finally, on Second Law, I think we, we were, you know, every album leading up to the Second Law was more experimental, more experimental, more experimental. And I think we finally reached the limits of where we felt like we could go, where we almost turned inside out and became something different to where we started. So. I think we found our boundaries, you know, and I think it was good to be able to come back to a more human sound on, on drones. You know. And how hard was to find that balance between uh, the technology that you were using and, like you say, like, let's go back to basics, let's uh, just uh, probably eliminate a lot of the technological aspect, probably with distortions, but more like a rock band. Uh, how hard was to find that balance? Um, well, you know, playing in a room together comes very naturally. You know, and that's um, it's it's very easy, and it kind of just sounds like us straight away. It seems, you know, we all we play together like so instinctively. It's kind of odd, but cool. And um, yeah, I know. You know, I think again, you know, like like we said, it's I think we've come very used to kind of layering up sounds and putting, you know, whether it's like synths and strings and all these different elements to make the sound very very big. So 
it's kind of, you know, a little bit difficult to not do that, you know, and to go, you know, hang on a minute, we don't need to put more synths on this, let's just stop <laughs> and leave it there. And, uh, you know, it's kind of difficult to not just layer it up and layer it up because it's something we're used to and, we, and something we like doing, you know, whether it's loads of vocals or, like I said, strings and stuff. So um, I think the times where we did, like, uh, I don't know, a good example of that, I suppose a couple of examples are like uh, a track called Reaper's, on the album and The Handler, you know, both of those songs are very much like the sound of us playing in a room. And The Reapers, you, you also use guitar solos that I love it because I think that in the last decade, <coughs> most of the bands, they forgot about, about solos. It's <laughs> important to remember. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I sort of, you know, rediscovered the guitar a little bit on this album. I mean, you know, I've been always playing guitar on the previous albums, but I kind of really spent more time on the guitar on this album than probably the last two albums put together, you know. Uh, so I just thought, I thought, you know, maybe it's time to just whip out a solo, you know. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a while. I don't think I've ever really played a solo like that before, you know, like, like Reapers, which really is kind of, you know, doing some technical things as well as some, you know, and it's quite long as well. It's like a long guitar solo. It's, it's pretty, you know, uh, that was partly influenced by working with Mutt Lang as well, who's, you know, who's really into classic rock, like ACDC and things like that. So I think a there was a little bit of that influence on this album. Now I'm going to ask you uh, something about different songs of the album. Let's start, let's start with Psycho. Then. I like it because the story is uh, the character uh, start like doing his job because the system tell mm. him and he doesn't really know already that yeah. what he's doing. At some point of your career, do you feel as a band like that? Look, I I'm just a, a selling machine, a yeah. selling ticket machine, or a <laughs> music making machine. Do you feel that way at some point? Uh, I think I think when a band when you first start when you're very young and you first go into the kind of the, the, you know the, the record s label system and, and the promotional system and all that stuff, you uh, it can be a shock, you know, because you you know when when you're watching artists and watching uh, you know, performers and things, you don't realize what goes on behind the scenes. So so in our teenage years, we just had these dreams of just being like you know playing on stage and just rocking out and having nothing to do other than that, you know. And then uh, when when we got our first record deal and started working towards releasing an album, Showbiz. I think I remember the tour on the first album, Showbiz. I definitely felt overwhelmed and I wasn't really enjoying the the process of promoting and the process of con continuous touring and stuff. I, I felt like I was not in control, you know, of what was happening, you know. And um, I actually referenced that a little bit in in the song Showbiz on the first album, you know. In fact, the fact that the album is called Showbiz actually is a little bit kind of talking about that, you know. Um, and the song called The Handler on this on this album is a kind of like conclusion to the song Showbiz because it actually has the middle section of that song has similar chord structures and similar lyrics, but I kind of feel like you know over the obviously 15 years we've we've learned to take control of ourselves, take control of our music, take control of our career completely. You know, we've had no intervention creatively from any anybody in the business world. You know, uh, to, regarding the music we make, so we've been very lucky to have or you know total autonomy, total control, and uh, it's something we learned though. You know, the showbiz was a shock. You know, to to, to how many of, the, of these outside people are you know are trying to influence you, but you know, Origin of Symmetry was the album where we said we're just going to do our own thing, we just don't care, and we got dropped by Maverick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is there's probably a, a, lot of, a lot of new bands that uh, are going to release their new album, and probably they're feeling the same that you feel when you were in the, in the showbiz time. <coughs> what could be the biggest advice to those little musicians that start making their own adventure? It, well, in the early days, well, I, you know, just... Um, Stay together and, you know, <laughs> enjoy that, it. That is the biggest challenge, actually. That is yeah. the biggest challenge. I think, you know, because we've been asked that question a bit. Um, you know, like, how, do you, how have you stayed together?